Discard Dark more Salvage to Oblivion Crown. I'll draw my library. Good game? This might be what you hear when the game ends, but what's actually going on behind the scenes? Hello everyone, I am here. I am here invited by the Spike Feeders to help you and help Spike Feeders talk about what am I talking about today? Oh, Get Rock Frog. Yo, I don't play Get Rock. Oh, okay, okay, I'll, I will use my advanced algorithm to start detecting, start detecting what to do. When we ask for suggestions at the end of these videos, we frequently have people request the Gitrog monster, but not a lot of people know that there are several distinct combos that go into it. Today's episode of Better Know a Combo talks about the first and most important one, a combo that draws your deck and sets up all of the other combos that actually win the game. So how does this combo work? Great question. We'll start with Dakmore Salvage in hand, the Gitrog monster in play, and Oblivion Crown attached to it. You can use any outlet that allows you to discard a card at instant speed, but this one is the most common. Oblivion Crown grants the Gitrog monster an incredibly useful ability. To activate it, I'll discard Dakmore Salvage, which triggers the Gitrog monster's third ability. Because Dakmore Salvage is now in my graveyard, I have the option to either draw a card or replace the draw with Dredge 2. In this situation, I'll choose to dredge and see what comes up. Up until this point, everything's pretty straightforward. Before we get into this next part though, you'll need to bear with me for a quick rules aside. This combo is not shortcuttable under Magic Tournament Rules Section 4.4, which governs shortcuts. This rule explicitly forbids shortcutting any combo that involves a decision tree. People do play and shortcut this combo in Commander, which isn't technically governed by the Magic Tournament rules, but it does require a bit of hand-waving. I'm not going to get into it here, but it's not generally worth making someone play this out manually. If they know how to execute the combo, executing the steps are unlikely to draw a slow play violation from an observing judge. Using, using my genius, divided by pi. Scanning, scanning all games, not scanning the Gitrog server because nobody should go there. Ah, I have it. I have the decision tree to help you and myself on how to pilot the Gitrog monster. Let's begin. This is a series of questions you can ask yourself that will lead to the appropriate action to advance the combo. The first question you need to ask yourself is, did I hit a land in the two cards I milled. If you didn't, and you didn't hit a shuffler, it's easy, you just go back to the beginning and do it again. Just do it again. And if you didn't hit a land, but you did hit a shuffler, and you haven't hit a land since the last time you shuffled, that's a mouthful. You hold priority on the shuffle trigger and continue dredging until you do. As a quick aside here, you could just shuffle every time you hit a shuffler, but there's a non-zero chance that you hit a shuffler on the dredge after every time you shuffle. If this happened, an observing judge might consider what you're doing to be slow play and they'll be like, don't do it, knock it off, stop it. By holding priority and continuing to dredge, we can guarantee that we can draw at least one card every time we shuffle. If you hit a land since the last time you shuffled, then just resolve the shuffle and keep going. But but what if what if you hit a land in the two cards you dredged? That's the point of this combo. Because the land hitting your graveyard will trigger the Gitrog monster again, adding a draw trigger to the stack. If the other card isn't a shuffler, you hold priority and go back to the beginning to start over with the draw squirreled away to use later. Hey, squirreled. If you hit a shuffler in a land, you can put the shuffle and draw triggers on the stack in any order you want. But to keep the combo going, you'll need the shuffle first, while still storing a draw trigger on the stack. This is very advanced. By doing this repeatedly, you can bank enough triggers to draw your entire library. 
If you end up with some draw triggers left over after your library is empty, you simply discard a shuffler, let the trigger resolve, then draw from your library. You keep doing that until the stack is empty. And that's it! There are other combos that get Rog decks used to actually end the game, but the end state of this particular combo is you sitting pretty with your entire deck in hand. This sounds awesome, yes, but but how, how can people interact? How can people stop this? The best way to interact with this combo is to counter the Gitrog monster or the discard outlet at all costs. Once the Gitrog monster is on the battlefield, there's really only one moment where it makes sense to interact with this combo, and that's when they've discarded Dakmar Salvage and the Gitrog monster trigger is on the stack. You can remove the Gitrog monster, remove the discard outlet, counter the Gitrog draw trigger, or you can exile Dakmar Salvage from their graveyard. These will all stop the combo, but there's one thing to keep in mind. Every part of this combo can be done at instant speed, and unless your interaction has split second, the Gitrog player can respond by discarding any other land that they might have in their hand to continue comboing off. Most interaction isn't really very good against this combo. If you really want to have a shot at dealing with it, you'll have to shut them down. Dranith Magistrate does a great job of keeping the Gitrog monster in the command zone. Because this is a graveyard-centric combo, graveyard hate like Rest in Peace and Leyline of the Void can put up a big roadblock. Most, if not all, of the discard outlets used in this combo require the activation of abilities on creatures. Even Oblivion Crown, which is an aura that grants a discard ability to the creature it's attached to. Curse Totem and Linvala Keeper of Silence will prevent people from discarding Dakmore Salvage. To a lesser extent, you can also use Damping Matrix or Suppression Field. Just a quick note here, sometimes people use Chains of Mephistopheles or a quirk in the rules for discarding to hand size at the end of turn, but we won't be covering that today. Keep an eye out for a future episode of Better Know where we'll do a deeper dive into a concept called the End Step Sculpt. Because this combo involves drawing cards, Narset Parter of Veils can shut it down. This actually brings up a really interesting rules interaction. If you try to draw a card other than the first card you draw each turn, Narset does put a stop to it even if you plan to dredge. Here's the ruling from Narset. Replacement effects, such as that of Dakmore Salvage, can't be used to replace draws that Narset disallows. However, if an opponent's first draw is replaced by dredging Dakmore Salvage, for example, that draw didn't happen and Narset won't stop the next draw, which incidentally may also be replaced by dredging Dakmore Salvage. You might also think that you can shut them down using Notion Thief or Spirit of the Labyrinth, but newer versions of the deck have ways to kill creatures without using their draw, using Cabal Pit. That just about does it for this episode of Better Know a Combo. Huge thanks to our guest for this episode, Rebel Sun. If you want to check out Rebel on social media, I'll put her information up on screen. But what you should really do is go check out Rebel's YouTube channel. She's so funny, and all of her stuff has some really great insights on CEDH and the rest of the format as a whole. Huge thanks to Rebel for being our guest on this episode, and that just about does it. If you have a combo you want to see explained, make sure you let me know in the comments below, and we'll catch you next time. Hey, thank you for checking out the Spike Feeders on YouTube. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button before you close the window, or you can click on this link to check out our other great videos.